Danganronpa. What's going on, everyone? It's the Niskel. Welcome back to Danganronpa. This is the last bonus episode we're going to be doing. We're going to be getting 100% completion. That is every gallery item, every item that you can give as a present. We'll also be looking at some descriptions of some of the items, just little fun ones that I happen to find. And uh, we're also going to be looking at the descriptions for the items we got at the end of school mode. But first things first, you're going to want to have a lot of coins. Because there are a lot of gallery items, and some of them are priced what I would consider incorrectly. Off screen, I went ahead and got all the event gallery items. And the pricing is really kind of weird to me. Every still image that you see that was drawn normally is three coins. But if there is ever a cutscene or anything that you could see that has motion, such as this one right here with Sayaka, that is priced at five. Now, what is also kind of bad about this is this cost about 200 coins, I would think, just to get everything. And one of the funniest ones is right at the end, the, when you have to buy the Monokuma Theaters, those all cost one coin. So they're not screwing you out of anything. It doesn't cost three to get that. But there is one in particular that it, I completely don't agree with. Because you're going to need a lot of coins. You're, gonna, you're probably going to need 999 plus to get everything. Or at least in my case, because I still have items left to get in the present room, I'm going to need even more coins. But if you're just playing through and want to get all the gallery items, I would say get 999 and then buy everything. Which you should have plenty by that time. I always love looking at this artwork. It's so, The art style in Danganronpa, I absolutely love it. Not so much that where it goes into kind of like the realistic style, but just... Character designs, absolutely love them. And <laughs> be sure to get that alternate ending. This is actually a missable gallery item. If you want this item and Man's Fantasy, which Man's Fantasy you have to get out randomly out of the Monokuma machine. You need to pay coins to get it, and it's a random item. But the way to get the bad ending image is you actually have to go through Chapter 5, rat out Kyoko, and then watch the entire scene and then save, and that will unlock in the gallery. And getting down here, the end. Each one of those costs three coins, which makes absolutely no sense. And then you have all the Monokuma theaters, those are a coin apiece. So now that we have all those, we're completely done. And I, at first I thought there were no difference in the Monokuma theaters, and then I remembered this actually goes through the entirety of the Monokuma Theater. I thought it was just the image, but no, it's actually going to go through the entire thing. So we're not going to watch that. We've already seen that. And the event gallery is 100% complete. Just remember, there are two missable ones. You're going to want to get the bad ending of the game, and you're also going to want to get A Man's Fantasy, which is in Chapter 3, about the midway point. If you have A Man's Fantasy in your inventory, it'll automatically trigger. If not, it'll just skip the entire thing, and you don't want that. Uh, this one's kind of unfair, too. Every single song is five coins. That gets really expensive because you're going through the entirety of the soundtrack to get all this. Hold on, we need a need a good song to play while we're going through and buying all these. Danganronpa's soundtrack is, again, something I really enjoy. And I actually found out while doing research, the reason I like it so much is because the same guy who made this did the soundtrack for No More Heroes. And I greatly enjoyed that game. That has a kick-ass soundtrack as well. Oh, I think this is the... Yeah, that's the song I love. It's when it gets all bombastic, when it gets all... I don't want to say a destructive style of music, because you're going for, like, a final debate, and you've got to find the truth. And this is such a nice song to listen to, especially when you want to up the intensity of what you're actually doing. you got to find the truth. So there we have everything from the sound gallery. Now for the official artwork and other pieces of work that may not have made it into the actual game. Buying all of these, all of these cost three coins. So we're going to be purchasing all those. We might take a look at a few of them, but right now this is just the character artwork. We're looking at kind of the kind of the creator's notes, the artist's notes on what needs to be on each specific character. Like, for example, Sayaka's different expressions, they also have little insignias, like special brands that they would wear. And they have to get all those small details on there as well. Oh, I didn't know that. 
apparently, <laughs> earlier in development, uh, Aoi's hair was supposed to react with her emotions, but I'm, I'm kind of glad they kept it as they did. And that is hilarious. Genocide Jill flipping me off is probably the funniest thing about this entire thing. I love it. Let's take a look at Sakura. Uh, apparently, she didn't change much. I th think the only thing they changed during her design was adding, uh, giving her longer hair. Let's see about Chihiro. Oh, not, not too many notes. And I love a lot of these. When they finalized the design for some of the characters, they didn't change much after that. I mean, so, certain designs changed radically, but a lot of these were just... It's the little notes, the little touches that didn't change that I like seeing. And apparently, Junko's proportions were a very... Uh, needed to know detail, apparently. <laughs> and I love Monokuma's here. Okay. As soon as they got the finalized design for Monokuma, there wasn't much you had to do. Again, I still think in, like, a, a horror-related aspect, the original Monokuma would be absolute nightmare fuel. Now, this is the part I absolutely adore. This is the reason I love the artwork so much. This is the official artwork. Like, when you want to hear about a person's ultimate ability, you take a look at this. Like, Leon's ultimate baseball star, that is really cool. This is These are kind of like the action shots. What you want to show to people, it's like, this is what this guy does. See, look at that. He's the ultimate manga artist. I know you probably wouldn't figure that out. The fanfic artist. And Heroes is pretty cool, too. I really like that. I don't think there's anything showing that he's a scam artist besides the spirit tag on his arm. I might be wrong about that. Kyoko's is kind of... Nah, uh, I mean, she's supposed to be mysterious, and I guess that's somewhat shown in her artwork. That one's pretty funny. The only way you'd know she's a swimmer is if you know what a swimsuit looks like. Oh, I absolutely love that one. <laughs> it's so good. And the ultimate martial artist. Again, it's these type of action shots showing what these characters do, what their ultimate ability ends up being. Jahiro's is amazing. There is so much going on there. You know, we already got a couple of these. And promo art from Monokuma. It's just him. Now we already got the special characters. Giondos, though. That is amazing! <laughs> I love how this is drawn! That is so cool looking! And here we have just the uh, regular official art. A lot of these portraits were used in promotions, so if you wanted to see the full body art, you would actually have to, like if you're flipping through a magazine, this is what you would see. A lot of these are simplistic. I think I would rather go for the other promotional art, which is showing off their ultimate abilities. But you know what? This will work. I was curious to see if there was anything different between Imposter Junko or not. And then we're getting into the other artwork, which we showed off in the Unlockables video. And, oh, this is... this is terrible. It's actually showing, uh, pieces of the different executions, such as Alter Ego getting killed, the Alter Lump. And, uh, here comes Junko, when she was being, uh, submitted to her own despair devices. Oh, that's terrible! <laughs> you can actually buy Mondo Butter! Uh, we should never forget that that exists. Oh, these uh, these were designs that were used in Danganronpa 2, but never made it into any game. They were just portraits on the wall. And that's it. We have bought all of the artwork. Last but not least, we have the movie gallery. The videos are expensive. Five coins, and each punishment is ten coins. This is where all of your money is going to go. You probably need about close to 300 coins to buy all these, because there's... Quite a few videos, and I actually want to show this off. I got a bit of a story for this Let's Play as a whole. Every time there was a an official cutscene that would play, it would get tagged for content ID. And the first time it happened, I couldn't figure it out. The second time it happened, I knew immediately why it did it. This cutscene in particular did not get tagged for content ID. And the reason is, it wasn't used in Danganronpa the animation. That's how good the anime was animated. It got the art style perfectly from the game. And because of that, you can't use full scenes from the anime because it would get content ID'd. And I actually had to kind of counterclaim it saying, 
This is actually the game, it's not actually the animation. To which they were released shortly after that because <laughs> it automatically thought that this was the animation. That's how good it was done. So I have to give Danganronpa the animation credit, they, they got the style down perfectly. But as far as execution and everything, but that's, that's completely different. Danganronpa the animation, something completely different, I could talk for hours on how it, how it has shortcomings and how it's good in certain regards. But, uh, this is actually your bad ending. Besides the one image you get, this is the cutscene you will get if you rat out Kyoko. She will get an after-school lesson, and it'll be the last lesson she ever learns, which is don't mess with Monokuma. I actually really hate that scene. Kyoko is best girl, and I hate to see her in peril. But we don't have to deal with that anymore. The ultimate punishment. All the results are one coin, which is really good because it's just a simple slot machine. Easy buys, won't cost you much, and it actually has Kyoko's in there too, which is really good. Each one of these, I don't know if I would charge three coins for these. Again, I'm not a developer, so maybe because it's a special video. These ones, however, this scene kills me. Just of how seemingly gruesome it is, the music choice for it, which they brought that specific sound clip back to Danganronpa 2, and I, I hate that they didn't use it as much in this game because it's such a good clip. Now you'll notice, I've done everything correctly, but there's still one video missing. This is important. This is an alternate ending clip that you can only get when something specific is met. What is that something? Well, we're gonna have to go to the school store. After you beat the game, a brand new item shows up in the Mono Mono Machine. Well, what is it? We're gonna have to take a look. I'm actually only missing, let's see, one, two, uh, let's see here, three, three items. I'm missing three items for 100% completion. So what I'm gonna do with the rest of these coins is I'm gonna make it so that I can't not, that's a double negative, excuse me, so that I cannot miss getting an item. 0% repeat rate, let's get a brand new item, and look, that's one I hadn't gotten before. Now, if some of these, oh, by the way, we just completely ruined the mind of the Mono Mono Yoshi. It can't believe you gave that many coins, and it's gonna give me a lucky. And I got the same item I just got. That's like an insult. I actually needed that one and you gave me two. That drill will pierce the heavens. And that's all you get. You just get two luckies, if that. Now, uh, something else I was mentioning is a brand new item has shown up in the Mono Mono machine. It's a very important item. You can only unlock it after beating the game. And I wonder if this is the one. You'll know you got the right one if a new tone is played. A brand new song will play for that specific item. We'll be showing that one off later. That's the one that actually unlocks after you beat the game. Oh, Hope's Peak Ring, I already have like five of those. If some of these items look inconsistent, such as I may have already given this item to a, to a person, it's because I had to reload save sometimes, and a lot of the times when I went back to the Mono Mono machine, I didn't get the same items twice. So one of these, I believe one or two of these might be a repeat, where I had it during the main game, but don't have it now, so it doesn't count towards 100% completion. I'll know when I have gotten 100% of the items when the trophy pops up. And that is something I actually haven't gotten yet, is getting every single present that you can get. And I would like to stress that the items you get from school mode do count towards 100% completion. You have to have those. And I can't believe I hadn't gotten the hand bra yet. That one actually has a hilarious description. I'm gonna have to read that for you later. Should have only two, maybe one item left. For this specific playthrough, it, oh look, a man's fantasy. For this specific playthrough, I only need two items left, and then it'll be 100% repeat rate. Well, we won't be able to get anything else. 
And I think I have just enough coins to get those last two items. Which might pose a problem. We'll tackle that when we get there. I'll go ahead and say it right now. After we get this item, I will have 100% and the trophy will pop. Which is good. This will be the first time I've ever gotten that. And of course the last item is a tumbleweed. There it is. Seriously, you shouldn't have. That's for getting 100% in presents. I now have one of everything, or at least have unlocked every single item that you can give as a present. Now, notice it's showing there, I'm missing one. That shouldn't have happened. So let's go ahead and finish it up. Use, I believe it'll use the rest of our coins. I don't know how I managed to do this, but the last 93 coins will net me the final item. 100%. Good. Now for some item descriptions. Let's take a look at the ones we actually just got. This will this will kind of be the finale before we lead into the school mode items, which I can't r wait to read. The God of War Charm. I could have sworn I had given this to Sakura at one point during the Let's Play. Which, this is a love item for her, so if you're ever looking for an easy love item, go for that. The hand bra. I love this. A bra designed to slip over your hands. Its slogan, raise your hands, raise your spirits. <laughs> That is a great slogan! I love it! Oh, here we go, a tumbleweed. Why would we even give this to anybody? A dried out plant seen in many western films that pile up around your yard, just toss them off a cliff or something. A lot of these item descriptions are pure gold. It would take forever to go through every single one of these and find every single reference in here. So I'm only going to be looking for specific ones. There's one in particular. I'm trying to figure out, I think... I, I would like to say it's an innuendo, but that can't be. Maybe it's just my mind. Flip on the switch on the bottom to set the doll shaking. Apparently it's a kid's toy, but I don't really get the point of it. Uh, for some reason I thought that was an innuendo, but you know what? Forget it. There was another item we got. I'm not going to read it to you until the very end, because it's partnered up with a man's fantasy. A <laughs> young wash basin intended to give you courage to seek out a true man's fantasy, specifically in public bathhouses. We're such bad men. The escape button. We're going to look at that later. But here are the special items you get for completing chapters. Like right here, you get the Hope's Peak School Crest for completing the prologue. The Despair Bat. Oh, Leon. Rest in peace, buddy. Creates a foreboding sense of something that's about to happen. Mondo's old trench coat that has the name of the country's greatest biker gang leader embroidered on it. The Crazy Diamond. Kafumi created this costume at the school, but the quality is so high, it's hard to imagine it was made solely with the materials in the school. Yeah, no kidding. And it only fit a hero. It's the only thing left... Oh, that's terrible! <laughs> oh, it was once abandoned on Dream Island. It feels strangely familiar. Yeah, it was the rocket used in the beginning of the game, when they killed Hope's Peak Headmaster. And as the final memento of Junko and Oshima, they're decorated with twin bear figures. One for light, and one for dark. And... After beating, the, after beating the epilogue, we get an Easter egg! Is it a symbol of hope or a symbol of despair? Well, you'll have to play the second game to find out. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for, let's talk underwear! Kiyotaka's favorite briefs. They were also the preferred briefs of his grandfather, the former Prime Minister, and the official Ultimate Manager. The manufacturer of Military World claims they help support all ideal Japanese men from down below! <laughs> It's good! Byakuya's favorite high-end underwear. It comes from the only brand that the truly elite will wear. All of his family's underwear is made to order. In order to show that no matter how much money some no-name upstart may have, they'll never be a Togami. I love that! His are only one of a kind. Mondo's favorite boxer briefs. They fit nice and snug in order to keep from getting in the way when you're riding your hog. Mondo doesn't normally have a thing for tiger print, but the instant he saw them, he found himself drawn to the design. Hey, whatever helps you drive your hog, Mondo. Leon's favorite supportive sport, Underoos. <laughs> he may claim he hates baseball, but deep down it still holds a special place in his heart. After all, that's what makes him an ultimate. That's right, and he's allowed to have the second ultimate ability. He can sing. Hifumi's favorite briefs. This one-of-a-kind, not-for-sale-anywhere item was designed to mimic the garments of the Galactic King, Robo Justice. Due to Hifumi's exceptional girth, the briefs have been stretched into a rather form-fitting thong. I really didn't need to know that, and I knew it was a collectible! 
Yasuhira's favorite bikini briefs. The higher the waist, the higher your luck. <laughs> this is what the salesman told him at one of his seminars, and he couldn't resist. Later, he would run into Zephyr money troubles. It gave you bad luck, hero! Imagine that! Sayaka's favorite everyday underwear. They may be inexpensive, but when the ultimate pop sensation wears them, they still shine with an inner light. Of course, the brighter the light, the darker the shadow. That is a perfect description of Sayaka. She is a psycho. Kyoko's favorite low-rise briefs. No matter what position she finds herself in, their mysterious darkness will obscure her form. Whether she's squatting to inspect a crime scene or climbing a ladder in search of evidence, she's safe. That's perfect! Every time we saw her in, like, an upskirt position, there was only darkness! <laughs> Aoi's favorite panties. They're the kind of thing you'd expect to find in any bedroom in the world. They're as plain as what any prison inmate might wear, but still completely comfortable. The one drawback is that they turn totally see-through if you go <laughs> swimming in them. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> Aoi, you want to go swim in the pool later? Uh, boxers only. Or briefs. Toko's favorite panties. Actually, they're probably Genocide Jack's favorite. They have reinforced elastic and loops to hold her deadly scissors. Oh, wow, you store scissors right next to your happy area? Sakura's favorite loincloth. She wears the complicated garment to remind her daily of the process of putting her various martial arts uniforms. The loincloth represents her willingness to accept any challenge at any time. Cool. Celeste's favorite dark-hued panties. The most notable feature is the Thule lace, and it's rumored that a C-rank human can't bear to gaze upon them. They give off the distinct air of a queen. Makes sense. Junko's favorite under underwear. In contrast to her title as the ultimate fashionista, the underwear is remarkably plain. However, it's also woven from blade-resistant and bulletproof fibers, making it, s making it much more durable. Still, it doesn't seem to be spear-proof. <laughs> Wow! Oh my god, you could take that two ways, actually. She did get struck by spears. Uh, Chihiro's favorite bloomers. Even if you got a peek under his skirt, you wouldn't be able to tell at a glance that he was a boy. His choice of underwear clearly underlines how strong his fear of weakness really is. Aw, Chihiro. Well, I guess that does leave something to the imagination, at least. And now, the final item. Again, you can only get this after beating the game, and it shows up in the Mono Mono Machine. The escape button. This unlocks the last video. One press of this button will allow you to escape from Hope's Peak Academy. Once you possess it, a new clip will be added to the movie gallery. That is all the items. That's all I'm going to look at. And now... It's time to get that final video. Pay no attention to the inconsistent coins. I actually screwed up and had to reload a save. Imagine that! But I managed to get the rest of the items sooner, so I would have some coins left. Because you have one more video to buy. Last five coins we'll ever have to spend. I now have 100% items in the gallery, and there's the final trophy. There's another game that I've gotten the Platinum Trophy that's everything, 100% done with Danganronpa. And this is the final video. This is a what-if scenario. What if they woke up in Hope's Peak Academy, everything was about to go down, despair-inducing everything, and they just accidentally found the escape button. The button that would open the door. Everyone would live. Junko's plan would never go through. They would never meet Monokuma. They just happened to find the button and escape. This video is what I'm going to leave you on. This what if scenario, what if everybody lived? Thank you all for watching my Let's Play of Danganronpa. I hope you enjoyed it. It's taken a while. And I'll see you guys over in Danganronpa 2. Dang, dang, dang,